Biology. Today we are talking about the plasma membrane, in specific its structure, and in future videos we'll talk about some of its many functions. So just to get a long definition started here, the plasma membrane is a selectively permeable barrier for all cells and is a fluid mosaic of phospholipids, proteins, carbohydrates, and lipids. Now this definition looks like something you'll see in a textbook, uh, but we're going to unpackage that. Okay, so that's kind of why we're here. We're here to um, get a complete understanding, and you have me here to kind of unpackage some of these things for you. Okay, so we're going to go straight to the point. Plasma membrane is a barrier for all cells. It's mainly going to be composed of a phospholipid bilayer. Okay, so first of all, you may be thinking a phospholipid bilayer. What even is a phospholipid? All right, so a phospholipid um, is this structure here that we're looking at. And it's composed of two main parts, really three main parts, but um, one part is polar and another part is nonpolar. So what these actually mean is talking about their specific type of covalent bond uh, that these molecules have. Uh, but polar, really and truly, we always associate it with water loving. Uh, so water also is a polar covalent bond. Um, so this polar head here on this phospholipid is going to like to associate with water. So we generally say that the head of this is hydrophilic. Now down here we have a nonpolar tails. We got two of them. And these guys have a nonpolar covalent bond, or many nonpolar covalent bonds. Uh, so they are hydrophobic. They are water fearing. Okay, they do not like to associate with water. However, they do like to associate with other nonpolar things like our fats and our lipids. Okay? So typically when a molecule has both polar parts and nonpolar parts, we call it amphipathic. Okay? So amphipathic means it has a polar side and a nonpolar side. So these amphipathic phospholipids are organized into a bilayer in our membrane. So our membrane is mostly composed of a phospholipid bilayer. Uh, so the actual amphipathic chemistry is going to make it to where we have a separation of the inside of the cell and the outside of the cell. So all of our po polar items are going to be unable to cross the membrane, especially water. So we're going to have two environments, uh, two aqueous environments on the inside and on the outside um, that are separated because of the amphipathic nature of the phospholipids. Um, so here we usually see a visualization of the phospholipid bilayer in this 2D kind of linear structure. Uh, but it's important to note that the uh, phospholipid bilayer is in all three dimensions. Okay, so the entire cell is going to be completely surrounded um, by these phospholipids to separate it from this environment. So in addition to our uh, phospholipids, our plasma membrane is going to uh, contain a mosaic of many of the macromolecules that we talk about um, in organisms. Uh, so in addition to phospholipids, another lipid that we have is cholesterol. And cholesterol is really going to add to the fluidity of the membrane. Uh, so cholesterol kind of has a bad reputation as far as clogging arteries uh, for us humans on the organism level. However, at the cellular level, cholesterol is playing a major role at increasing the fluidity of our cells. So cholesterol is still very important for us to have um, in our diets and such. Not only are there lipids in our plasma membrane, but also we have numerous proteins. So the first proteins that are going to be pretty important are our transporters. Now transporters are going to primarily play a major role in transport mechanisms, which again is going to be in our next video. Uh, so we'll get to talk all about those guys. Uh, some more proteins we have, we have enzymes, and those enzymes are going to play a role in catalyzing reactions and uh, our signal uh, transduction mechanisms. Um, so being able to take a signal from outside the cell and uh, be able to send that signal down to our nucleus or to wherever in the cell to change some of our cell interactions going on. Uh, so these enzymes are pretty important uh, for the next thing as well, which are receptors. Um, so receptors 
are proteins that are mainly going to be uh, on the outside of the cell and they play a major role in cell signaling or uh, signaling from cell to cell interactions. Uh, so these receptors uh, for us are going to be uh, very important for hormones and for a lot of our endocrine functions. Uh, so these receptors are pretty important. So in addition to uh, proteins and lipids, we also are going to have glycolipids and glycoproteins. And so these are going to be mainly our sugar components of the plasma membrane. And so these sugar components are kind of like name tags. They play a role in identification of the cell. Uh, so it's really important, just kind of an example of uh, an application of this. Uh, our immune system uses these glycolipids and glycoproteins to recognize our cells compared to uh, foreign cells. So if we get a bacterial infection, our body knows that it isn't us because they have different glycoproteins and glycolipids. So we can identify lots of cells in this manner. So the last point that I want to make is that all of these uh, macromolecules and macromolecular complexes are going to be uh, fluid in the membrane. So they all have an ability to move around. Our phospholipids, uh, they can only really flip around every now and then, um, but they're kind of stuck in place. They have that fluid nature. But our proteins, our glycolipids, uh, and our glycoproteins, um, they are going to be able to move around and move to certain locations of the cell. So in review, uh, we saw that the structure of the plasma membrane is a phospholipid bilayer uh, with many proteins, with many glycoproteins and glycolipids, as well as some cholesterols. So in the next video, we're going to be taking a look at uh, transport mechanisms. Um, so we hope to see you there. If you enjoyed my video, please give me a like and subscribe if you want to watch more or if you're following along with your class. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. I am new to the YouTube space, um, so I appreciate any critique or constructive criticism that you guys may have. Um, and I appreciate you guys watching. You have a good one.